Good evening, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome to night time at Tecton Zoo. The reason it is night time is because we are finally going to build the nocturnal house. I have spent so long building this. This is the longest build I think I've ever done, but I am really, really happy with the final result. So let's jump in and get building. I can't even remember how long I've been talking about this nocturnal house for, but I'm so excited to finally be building it. Uh, I've been doing this for about two weeks, I think. I took a break to build the Galapagos giant tortoise habitat that we did last week, but um, there's just so much going on in this build. As you can see, we're in between the Arctic Fox Den and the Cheetah Conservation Center, and this is where we're gonna build the nocturnal house. So it's gonna be pretty sizable. These wooden walls mark out the area that it's gonna take up. It's gonna be circular, surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, but there's a very good reason for that, um, which is to do with the way that nocturnal houses work. So for a start, in Planet Zoo, uh, they don't. <laughs> the Frontiers sort of ignore the whole um, nocturnal thing in the game. There's loads of animals in the game where it doesn't even mention in the Zoopedia that they're nocturnal. If you remember the trailer for the Africa pack, full of shots of the cute little fennec foxes, gambling around in the bright sunshine which you will never ever see um yeah I, I think because of the way that the the time and the the seasons and everything else works in the game they didn't really have a way of making nocturnal houses work so they just decided to kind of ignore it uh which is fair enough i can't really think of how you would get proper nocturnal houses into Planet Zoo unless you had the ability to define a building as being a nocturnal house and the lighting engine would work completely different in there. So I'm guessing that's why there's no sort of facility for it in the game. But with this being a franchise zoo, I'm simply gonna switch it into sandbox mode to finish off the inside, blueprint what I build and then bring it back into our franchise zoo to complete it. And you'll see in the end cinematics when I load it into sandbox mode and change the time to midnight that it really does look like a nocturnal house. So you're seeing a lot of white concrete here, uh, no surprise, but that is gonna change. This is gonna be built in the brutalist style, which is much more untreated concrete. You can see I've changed it to gray now. I've decided to call it the night house as well. I thought that was a nice, simple name. So yeah, lots of untreated concrete. And then I'm gonna rely on texture, which I'm doing here, to make it look interesting rather than just making it white and having it automatically look nice. <laughs> um, I'm not actually a huge fan of the Brutalist style normally, but I thought it really suited this nocturnal house. We're gonna imagine this was built back in maybe the 60s, so 30 years or so after the zoo started, when Brutalism was the architectural style of the moment. So this is influenced by the Elephant House at London Zoo and pretty much every car park, a municipal building built in the UK in the 60s and 70s. It just seemed to suit this sort of monumental structure. For the entrance though that we're starting here, uh, I'll be moving away from the, the Brutalist aesthetic and doing a much more sort of arty, um, I don't know what you call it, postmodern maybe? Um, yeah, we'll say postmodern design to, to make it interesting and make sure it sits in with the rest of the zoo isn't, and isn't just a lump of uh, giant concrete. While I finish that, we should probably talk about what animals are gonna go in here. Um, so we're gonna have five species in here, all nocturnal, of course. So we're gonna have aardvarks, Chinese pangolins, fennec foxes, and both types of giant scorpion, the desert and the forest. Um, so lots going on inside the building which we'll get to later but that is why it is so big there is a lot to uh, to get in here the shape of this building is one of the reasons it took so long to build so trying to work out how the habitats inside would work when there needed to be three habitats along with a couple of exhibits in there made it really really difficult to calculate the area of how big it would need to be unless you're a mathematical genius <laughs> or just a lot more intelligent than me um, trying to work out how big enclosures would be when they were arranged in the long 
circular line around the inside of a massive circle that was then split into three it was way beyond my capabilities so when I first started building this I got quite far into the build and then started putting habitats in realized I just made it way way too small there was absolutely no way I could fit three habitats two exhibits and the guests in there so I had to tear it all down and start again which was uh, annoying, but it was definitely worth it. I didn't want to cut down on the number of species I had in here or anything like that. So yeah, tearing it down and starting it again was pretty much the only option available to me. And we'll talk a bit about building nocturnal houses IRL, um, but firstly, let's finish off the outside of the building. So I've just built a ventilation system here to go up on the roof. Um, and when I built the, the habitat itself, I actually copied it on top of itself and then rotated it backwards so the whole building is on an angle angled away from the entrance to make the entrance look more imposing going to use some of the in-game statues which i hardly ever do here but i really like this fennec fox one and obviously that is one of the animals that this is going to hold so i'm going to make a little display out of those i did experiment with some plants at the top um, but i just didn't think they fitted so there's a really nice uh, sort of mural of various leaves and ferns etc in the game so i decided to use that instead so we'll put that up there to serve as a backdrop for the statues and that is the entrance pretty much done just needs some signage which we will add in later and a few uh, touch-ups here and there just to make sure everything looks perfect but yeah i'm really really happy with the outside of this building going to put some really subtle decals on just in the joins where bits of concrete meet places that wouldn't get cleaned on a, on a daily basis um, and then put one of these africa pieces in which i used before in lima heights which i really like for some continuity i decided to raise the statue up a bit so it's more visible as you're walking up towards the nocturnal house so i've just put this sort of plinth in for the statues to uh, stand on and then we'll move on and start decorating the area around it so i did on the crocodiles and caimans house use these temple pieces to sort of cover up the gaps where the path didn't quite meet the habitat and ever since the decals came out i've been using moss and decals and things like that to do that instead but i thought that looked really good with the uh, giant brutalist structure behind it to have this rubble everywhere so I'm going to use this to um, fill in the gaps here I really like how it looks and then beside the, the habitat on either side as you walk up to it I'm going to build a garden build a garden plant a garden um, so that you do get some of the uh, contrast between foliage and concrete that is the one of the main features of this zoo so I'm just going to copy that across to the other side um, and then we will get started on the garden. I'm going to use the uh, periwinkle leaves again. Um, I just noticed when I was building this that there's two types of periwinkle leaves. One that's the sort of faded uh, green that I used for the salamander uh, exhibit and then one that's a much lusher green and if you mix them together you get really really nice uh, sort of grass effect. So planting some flowers in a border along here and I'm going to fill the rest of the space in with the periwinkle leaves and you'll see as it's uh, as I put them in as it starts to come together it just gives a really interesting texture to the area and so it's not just this giant expanse of one color of green it really uh, works I think I'm going to be doing a lot more of this around Tecton Zoo when I get the time because uh, I just really like the way this looks and then a few more of these palms sunk down into the ground um, and I'm going to join it up with the gorilla project that sits behind it here and that is the uh, externals of the building done apart from a few details which we'll come back to later but let's move on to the inside of the building and start the really difficult bit <laughs> So on the inside of the building, I'm going to be building one habitat in a circle all the way around the building, which I will then split into three separate habitats for the aardvarks, pangolins and foxes. And 
The reason I've done this is to try and combat one of the issues that they have with Nocturnal Houses IRL. So the main issue I guess with building a Nocturnal House, apart from the whole having to reverse the lighting, which is, uh, which is tricky, is the size of their habitats. So a lot of nocturnal animals are quite small. Uh, there's not that many large nocturnal animals. And um, even a decent sized one like an aardvark. So if you're outside in a zoo and you're looking at a sort of a medium sized animal in a decent sized enclosure, if that animal happens to be on the other side of the enclosure to where you are, um, it's not ideal. Obviously it would be better if it was right next to you, but you can still see it. Uh, and you'll still be happy. If you have an enclosure the same size as that in a nocturnal house uh, where it's practically pitch black and the animals on the other side of the enclosure you're literally not going to see it. So there's a real problem that zoos have trying to keep the animals visible and the simplest way to solve that problem is just to give them really small habitats. Um, then they're never too far away from the glass and the guests can see them. Obviously it's not ideal though because now the animals have only got a tiny little habitat to live in. Now in real life zoos have budgets happily in Planet Zoo despite our money troubles last week pretty much the cheapest thing to do in this game is building habitats so you can build I think this habitat cost something like $35,000 when it was finished building things is like the cheapest thing in the game so luckily I don't have to worry about any of the things that real zoos worry about when it comes to the build itself so I've decided to solve the problem of keeping the animals close enough to the glass to be seen by building the circular habitats so each habitat is only four meters deep so the furthest away Realistically, uh, an animal is going to be from a guest is about three and a half meters, which is doable. But because they run all the way around the entire circumference of the building, the habitats are big and the fennec foxes and the pangolins have the recommended amount of space in the game, which is very generous. So they always work with the, the largest possible recommended measurement in Planet Zoo. And the aardvarks have their exact recommended amount of space though unfortunately due to the way the hitboxes work in the game once the enclosure is planted up they are slightly below their space but they're still I think their welfare is on 92% if I recall correctly and obviously IRL they wouldn't have to give each shrub in their enclosure like a meters wide perf as they walked around it so that doesn't bother me uh, this did bother me however this um sort of surround at the bottom of the glass i just could not get this to rotate and look clean for some reason so i had to individually place each one of these blocks on the floor which was not fun this took a very long time indeed to individually rotate each of these into place um, but it does look nice and clean when it's finished, which is the main thing. Um, I just put the paths in, which you'll have seen, um, and then just lifted the floor up to check that they were in the right place. So the path runs all the way around the uh, barriers, pretty much where we are here, so the guests can get right up to it. And then there's a central path that you can't see hidden under the, um, the false path that I've put in, so that the guests can walk into the middle as well. And when we put the exhibits in, in a minute, they all link up so the guests can go and look in each side of the exhibits as well. So yeah, cut a lot of this out because um, it would have been a very long sequence indeed. But um, we have got the, the surround in nicely and then I'm going to copy that up and use it as a wall as well. Um, and just by accident really, as I copied it up, I knew it was going to sort of break through the roof at some point. So I was then going to have to go in and lower each block back down so that they fitted without going outside the roof but when I went outside to check it I actually really liked the way it looked I thought it made the roof look a lot more interesting so in the end um, I actually used this as a water collection and guttering system which I'm going to put in here so the water will collect around this wall drain through the drains I put in in a minute and then flow down these gutters to be um, disposed of and when you're working with a roof as big as this, anything at all you can think of to add detail to it is going to be really important because they will look really plain and um, just dull if they don't have anything added to them. So I was really happy to sort of accidentally come up with this drainage system idea. You can see some roof hatches as well, which I've used before in this zoo. They are made by the incredible PS Vision Gaming. 
um, which is the new name for Creative Games, who is one of my favorite creators. They are absolutely incredible. If you aren't familiar with their work, check them out. They've got a YouTube channel. They're linked on my main channel page. Easily one of the best Planet Zoo builders around. They do stuff where I don't even know how they've done what they've done. They are absolutely amazing, so definitely check them out. Um, let's move on and start putting in the lights, which is obviously one of the most important things in a nocturnal house, because that's how the whole thing works. One of the main influences on the lighting on the inside of this building was an art installation at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. And overlaid over the actual room were these lights suspended from the ceiling, like hundreds of lights in amazing patterns that would be almost impossible to build in real life. So you had this sort of classic Victorian building with this ultra modern light show over the top of it. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was really cool. Uh, and I decided to basically steal that idea for this building. Uh, but with, as I said earlier, budget being no issue, um, you can actually have it, have those lights in the, uh, in the building for real. So they're going to be suspended from the ceiling. Um, there was going to be a lot more than I ended up with, but unfortunately there's no way to get the lights to be dim enough to then have hundreds of them and it not be too bright because obviously the nocturnal house can't be too bright. I've used the new lights from the Europe pack with being LED lights which is what they often use in real nocturnal houses. It enabled you to have quite bright lighting but control the decay of the lighting so it doesn't spread too far so that the guests are able to see where they're walking around without bumping into stuff but the lights don't actually extend into the animals habitats so it's still dark enough in there for them to feel like it's night time. I put some uh, solid barriers in by the door which will be covered up with concrete just to stop the guests from stopping there to look into the habitats and now we're putting in something I've never used before one of the new features in the game the burrow um, so this is really cool and you can attach a habitat camera to it so that the guests and you can see the aardvarks when they are in their burrow and that works really well I really like that feature I'm um, just going to put some infrastructure in, one of the staff pods that we built way back in episode 2 that we always use. Um, this will give the keepers etc somewhere to do their work for this habitat. And then it's time to finish planting up the other habitats, take care of the pangolins and the fennec foxes. Pretty bare bones in here, you don't want the animals to be obscured by too many uh, shrubs etc when it's going to be super dark put the exhibits in um, just a really simple design here to tie it in with the rest of the building so some big concrete uh, structures here uh, this is going to be the first exhibit I've ever used in the zoo where you can actually walk around and look, look at it from all four sides like they're designed to be I always sort of hide them away in buildings to make them look more interesting normally you can only look through the uh, the front uh, window this one you can actually walk all the way around it like you can do normally you can still never see the animals in there though obviously with it being planet zoo <laughs> um, and then we'll move on and put in the screen for the burrow cam that I mentioned so um, this is going to sit right in the center just build a little custom stand for it and this will enable the guests to see the aardvarks when they're down in their burrows. Now we do have a problem which is what is it going to look like in the dark? So as I mentioned right at the start of the video I'm going to do that in sandbox mode. So the way that I've done it is right in the center of the building I placed one of my favorite pieces, the hinge, um, into the floor and then I loaded the zoo in sandbox mode, made it in the middle of the night and put in all the lighting and adjusted everything so it looked perfect and then I grouped together everything that I'd added in including the little hinge and saved it as a blueprint and then opened the zoo back in franchise mode loaded the blueprint in aligned the the hinge from the blueprint with the hinge from the franchise zoo and it fitted in perfectly and just delete the hinges and job done I thought I'd include the blueprint itself because it looks really weird when you've just got these the lights and all the decorations just floating around with the terrain from the zoo in the background. And that is the night house completed. I really hope you enjoy the end cinematics. This is definitely the most complex thing I've built and possibly my favorite. I absolutely love what this looks like when it's properly dark inside. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you soon for another episode of Tech on Z. Thanks for watching. <laughs>